welcome to the channel. In this video, we're just gonna do a quick and simple install on putting the Quake LED light bar into my 2021 Ford Bronco. Basically, one of the limitations with the Bronco is, is the light in the back, quite frankly. It's just not up to par with my needs. I take my rig camping. Um, a lot of times I'm cooking in the back on the Ford uh, tailgate table and I just don't have any lighting back there. I gotta, I gotta hang a, a lantern and have someone hold a flashlight. There's a stock light in the back trunk area and it just doesn't do it justice. So I saw the, the new product by Quake LED. It's a light bar that just tapes up into the back of your soft top and or your hard top as well. And on this one is the soft top. And so I'm just gonna do a quick tutorial video on how to install it. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to come away with no electrical experience and be able to install one of these. It's a pretty simple product. It's just a little north of uh, $130, I think. I know you can do it cheaper if you DIY the same kit. However, I know a lot of people just don't have experience with electrical, just like me, aren't comfortable with making their own products. And if you're not comfortable with that, then honestly, this product is perfect for you. So the place that this installs is going to be right here along the edge of this seal. It's going to be coming down. It's going to go between the seal and the clip for your push rod. And then it's going to go all the way down about to right here. It's about 39 inches. It fits in pretty well. All right. So what you get from Quake LED is, of course, you get your instructions. You get the light bar, which you see right here is already wired up with the fuse, inline fuse holder, some uh, connectors, which will connect for your power and your switch, your switch, which is the click, uh, click switch, and then you'll get some uh, insulation, a bunch of zip ties, some inline uh, splices, which are pretty handy, a fuse, and then your connectors. All right, the tools you need are pretty simple. Uh, just your basic drill. And then for the bit, I like to use a step bit. It needs to be anything that's three quarter inches. So on this one, the step bit, you got multiple sizes, three quarter inches. On this one is the last size. But if you're unsure, you can always measure it and make a mark at which step you need to stop at. Or just if you're close, stop, test fit it. If it works cool, if not, go on to the next size up. Then they recommend a center punch. I have an automatic center punch um, from back in the day. These are cheap, $5 at Harbor Freight. You don't necessarily need one though. You can probably get by without it. It just helps lining up the bit that much easier. Then a small flathead screwdriver. Again, Harbor Freight, cheap. Then you need a uh, 7 8 wrench or an adjustable wrench if you don't have 7 8 And then a pair of pliers. And uh, that's all they recommend. We'll see if that works. Okay, so the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna come along this line here and we're gonna wipe it clean, this the mounting surface. And then we're gonna take our light bar and we're gonna set it up. And we're gonna find, we're gonna follow this wire until we find the connection point. Yours may come disconnected. Uh, either way, Quake just says to disconnect. And then next, what you wanna do is you wanna, you wanna place it up and you want to test fit it in place and you want the curved end to be sticking outward like that one thing i noticed which is quite annoying is that this uh this is just basically a plastic cover and the led strip just rests inside and when you're on trails and stuff it shakes and the led strip rattles inside the plastic and i know it's an off-roader you know rattles happen but I like to minimize it. So I got some basically Kleenex and I stuffed it in either end. And then these plastic caps just go back in, really easy to take in and out. And uh, no more rattle. 
So after I, I fixed the location of the double-sided tape, I actually used both. I used the original one that was on the back, which is the wrong side. And then I put the new tape right here just to give it a little extra hold. And it, it, it held pretty well. You know, it's just a matter of putting it up there, making sure it goes in between your clip and your seal. And uh, it runs pretty flush up in there. It's a perfect fit. So I'm very impressed. Make sure again that your wire side is on your passenger side of the vehicle. And that's going to be because when you run your wiring, it's going to go to here, which is on the passenger side. All right, at this point, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, just start looping the wire through, put our first uh, black sticky thing right here, clamp to hold it down. You want to have it slightly loose. You know, you don't want to put tension on this and pull the light bar out. Um, and then wrap it around this strap and just start clamping down. All right, guys, so one of the things you're gonna have to do is remove this plastic panel and it's pretty easy. It's held in by five clips and they're just pushed in. So all you have to do is from the top pull and then the bottom ones will stick in. So what I recommend is instead of bending the whole thing and pulling them out, you could possibly snap them. Just reach around the sides and pull the bottom ones out and then it comes right out. Then after that, you're gonna have to grab right here and pull. Trust me, it will come out and it won't break, but it's this plastic clip that's releasing right there. And that pulls out. Just do that one and that'll give you enough room to reach in there and grab that metal, oh sorry, that not that metal, the uh, push pin. Real quick update on the wiring, guys. Uh, so Quake LED wants you to run the wiring this way. And then they suggest you bring it over and connect it here with some of their uh, sticky clips and then bring it down and then into here to connect to this. The issue you have with that is you need slack in the line for when the soft top opens and closes. And that slack has got to go somewhere. Um, in my opinion, it looks kind of ugly and it's it just annoying. It gets in the way and they give you a ton of this wire, like a lot. So you have to bunch a lot of it up and put it up in here and that just looks really ugly plus i have some of the jcr molly panels coming right here and this line coming through here is just going to interfere with that placement so what i did i did something different i ran the wiring down down through here and then it might be hard to see on camera but i just brought it down and around through here to this panel that just pops right out and then i'm going to wire it back into this that way. In my opinion, that looks quite a bit cleaner. You can barely tell there's wires here and it doesn't interfere at all with the soft top opening and closing. I've already tested it and I'll probably get some black electric tape and put some tape here just to hold it in position so it doesn't move around a lot. But even so, like it's going to look so much better in my opinion. So the next step we got to do is once we get this clip out, pull this panel back just a little bit. We don't want to crease anything. And there's this gray slot right there in the middle of the yellow. Use your flat tip screwdriver to reach in and push that and then pull this gray connector out. Once you get that connector unclipped from the 12 volts, just pull it around here. There's plenty of slack, just let it hang. That way we can access these wires to put our splices in later. Next what you wanna do is you wanna put a little center punch right here where you anticipate the middle of your hole to be that you're gonna drill for your switch. Check the area behind it first to make sure there's no wires or anything before you drill. And then I got my automatic punch. So I just push and it does a nice little dimple there, which isn't gonna show on camera, but trust me, there's a nice little dimple there that we're gonna put the drill bit and it's gonna center it right where I want it to go. So uh, this is the fun part. We're gonna take our step drill. We're gonna place it in the little dimple we made and we're gonna basically drill till we get to the three quarters of an inch on the step drill, which on mine, like I said, is the very end. Um, I'm not a big fan of all the plastic falling down in that hole. So I'm gonna hold a vacuum up into it as well at the same time. I don't have a tripod or anything, so you won't be able to see this, but it's just drilling straight through plastic. It'll take 10 seconds. All right, so I took the plunge and there's a nice little hole right there, slightly off center from the socket but i don't give a crap and then this uh switch fits right in perfectly 
Okay, next we're gonna get our wiring harness and we're gonna get the black wire and the red wire. The black wire is gonna connect to this green and black wire and the red wire is gonna connect to this white and brown wire. And the way we're gonna connect them is through these blue taps. They basically, they crimp right there over the wire and they have a spade connector on the side and you'll connect the spade end which is this end into that right there and it'll push in and create a connection splices into the electrical so to speak and then the yellow wire that comes with the kit is in case you want to add a separate switch which we don't have so we'll just tape this off somewhere and not even use it All right, so uh, I installed those spade connectors. Pretty simple stuff. And uh, connected this. I know it's all messy right now, I'll clean it up later. So this is a, a shot before with just the stock light in the Bronco. As you can see, can't see my table at all. Barely see in here. Then we hit this nice little orange button. And now we got all that light. So now if we're just cleaning up the wire, it's pretty simple. Um, just take, there's a lot of access wire, quite a bit. Take your time, run it down here, attach your clips wherever you feel like putting them. Electrical tape as well will work. And then just run everything into here and uh, you can tape it up to the inner plastics or what have you. There we go. Right there. Sorry about that. Tape it up to the inner plastics just so it's not rattling around and creating a lot of noises. And then this uh, yellow wire that you don't use, I'm just going to cut it here and tape it up um, just so I don't have all that extra slack because there's like three feet of slack. And that pretty much wraps that up. So this is the finished product. Got my light bar coming along flush. Right here it loops in to the first clip. Then I move it around behind the strap, another clip in the corner. Then from there, I just put some electrical tape down to blend it in. Then the next clip about halfway through. And then I brought it around behind here put another clip and then I put this insulation around it and fed it through the gap right there into or behind this panel and then wired it back here. So in my opinion, this is much better looking than the way Quake wants you to do it. They want you to have that slack coming right here and then going down into there. And there's, like I said, there's feet and feet of extra cable. So you could theoretically, I could wire this all the way over there in that door if I wanted to and it would fit um, but this looks much better and you don't have that extra cable hanging around and I could put my molly panel here still so I like it pretty bright too hey guys I hope you liked that video um, I'm planning on releasing a lot more videos in the future I've got a couple mods I've already done to the Bronco that I can't show you how to do them because they've already been done, but I'm more than happy to, to show you what I have done. Uh, I've done sliders. I've got the Rough Country winch mount installed with the worn winch. I've got some pod lights that I put on from Harbor Freight. And then, uh, like I said, I have some JCR products that I'll be installing soon, uh, mainly the Molly panels once those get here. So I, I do wheel a lot. So I'm planning on posting some videos of some wheeling, some drone shots, uh, once I get some more money coming in the next couple weeks or so, I'll buy a better camera. So I apologize for this camera footage. I know it's kind of weak, but I'm filming on a, an older iPhone SE. So I'll work with what I can get, all right? So I appreciate you watching the video. Take care.